Hey guys and welcome to another Unity tutorial and this is going to be specifically in Unity 2019.3 in the most recent version that we've got now and a few changes have been made and I will mention these and this is going to be to set the record straight with how to respawn your player, change the transform positions, do triggers, make sure that that all works efficiently. So before I get started there was something that changed in recent versions of Unity and you, I think it was 2018 point three and a few people in my previous versions of how to respawn a player in unity mentioned that you just fall through the trigger and it doesn't work now if you go to edit project settings you go to physics and you'll see that there's something called auto sync transforms and this is automatically by default unticked and this just means that unity in previous versions used to automatically when you transform something's value or change its position it used to update in real time all of the time and used to be hard taxing on the actual engine so by default they've set it to false so it will only update when you specify that it should update its position so this was specific to character controllers or any physics deemed uh, things when you transform something in unity within the physics engine so we'll get straight into this now and this that solves a lot of myths that you've already got and I'll show you in code on exactly how you can do it because if you tick that box it will go to the legacy version and you'll be able to jump into the collider and do everything but it's slower if you do it a lot or if you do a lot of calculations there so I'll show you exactly when to update it in the code so in my scene I've got an FPS controller you can use a third person controller you can use a 2d character it's exactly the same concept that applies but a few tweaks here and there. So on your character or on your trigger that you might have, you can see the gray down here or in my scene is just, you imagine that's missed and we don't want to fall into there because this redness is bad. Um, we need to make sure that there is a rigid body on the character or on the trigger itself. One of the objects that when you do a trigger event should have a rigid body. So you can see that my player has a rigid body. You need to make sure that my player is tagged as player because that's what we're going to reference in the script. On my respawn trigger, you also want to make sure that it's got a box collider or any particular collider and we set it to is trigger because we're going to trigger an event. Now that's perfect. We're actually ready to roll right now. So we need to create a script. So we'll right click in our assets folder, go create and choose C sharp. And then we'll call this respawn script for an example. We'll open up in Visual Studio and then I will delete what I've got in my starting methods. And I'm just going to add two variables so I'm going to write in square brackets serialize field this just allows us to make this private variable that I'm going to create visible in the inspector without making it public because it's just good programming practice so we'll say private transform and we're going to look for the transformer of the player and then we're going to have another serialized field private transform and then it's going to be our respawn point that we're going to specify then from here we'll say void on trigger enter and then we're going to have two brackets facing each other and if you press tab after you put on trigger enter visual studio may auto complete it for you but we would want collider as the thing that we're going to pass in as an argument to this method and we will set this as other because it's we're going to look for something that we specify and then you can add two left and right facing curly brackets below there then we can say that if other dot compare tag and in brackets in quotes then capital player with the thing that we tagged our player object then we're going to say that if we find that tag then we're going to have the left and right facing curly brackets again and then we're going to say the player dot transform but transform this time is lowercase dot position because we're going to get the player's actual position and set that equal to the respawn point dot transform dot position with a semicolon but what is different here now if we just jumped into our trigger here you would expect in previous old versions it'd be fine it would do the physics calculation and it would transform us to where our respawn point is but in this version of unity we need to specify at this point that we'll update the actual transforms only when we specify so we need to write physics dot sync because there's one called auto sync transforms but we can just use something called sync transform which just says applies transform changes to the physics engine so we can um, auto complete that for sync transforms then add two brackets facing each other and add a semicolon because we're going to call the sync transforms method to update all our transform values that we're going to use so we'll move back into unity 
go onto our trigger that we've got. So my respawn trigger that I previously created, and I'm going to add my script to it. It's going to look for our player, which is our first person controller. It's going to look for our respawn point. So my respawn point is something that I previously created and all it is is a cube that lives in the air. So it's going to respawn up here in the sky. And so we can literally just press play from here. You can see that I'm here in my game and I can run and jump in and you can see that, oh, I respawned over from up where that cube was. I'll give you the quick example. If I move that physics line, go back into Unity and jump into our object, you'll see that what was working before doesn't now transform us because we're not updating anything. So that's a simple way to do it. Now what I've done is I've enabled my third person controller which also has a rigid body and I've tagged it as player. So I'm gonna show you that it works in exactly the same way. And you can see that on our respawn trigger, I'll just add my third person controller instead of my third pers first person controller. And so then I'll be able to play my game, run into my trigger. And you see that I drop down from the sky like so as you would expect I to do. And you can do the very same thing in 2D. The only difference in 2D from what other people have said to me in the past is that if you're gonna use on trigger enter, you can use on trigger enter 2D, and then you can use collider 2D, and then it works in exactly the same way for 2D objects. So I really hope this dispelled a few myths about running, transforming, and using triggers in Unity and in most recent versions of Unity so we can always respawn in other positions. So thanks very much for watching. I did create a Patreon recently so if you're looking to support the channel and help me keep all the content free be sure to check that out and all my other great assets on the Unity store. So thanks very much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Cheers.